this clinic here, Craig, I see Craig Bratt and Clark Cooning. Uh, hopefully we are now on the Bar Mill site, thank you, and which means that all of our followers, and we have a lot, thank you Craig, right here, uh, thumbs up, there you go. Anyhow, we were talking about uh, clamps a minute ago, and this will go for about an hour, so we didn't miss much to the general public. Um, but if you have any questions, please make sure, hi Brian, I see Brian Thompson is here, uh, make sure that you ask us questions if you have any. The thrust of today's meeting is more or less on the preliminary uh, Manny Cotto. Hey, Manny. Uh, the thrust of this is on the uh, essential tools and what we like that maybe you have and maybe you don't have, maybe you use and maybe you don't use. So please feel free. The questions come up very quickly here. I see a lot of fellows, Henry Puckett and Keith... Uh, Lebold, I guess it is. Uh, anyhow, Mike. Hey, Mike Chassis in Cornish. Yeah, of course, Mike. Uh, Joe Walsh, not really. Uh, and John Justice. Okay, now what we're talking about here is clamps and so on. We just went through a couple of major things as far as what Jack uses, and he's going. We're going to continue with this. If you have a question, I'll try to keep a sharp eye on the screen. But this is basically Jack's clinic. Uh, I, can't, I can't read that. Too small. Well, I can read it for you. I can. Uh, Jack is a problem. <laughs> Despite his great modeling, he can't see a damn thing. No. I, I tell you, uh, uh, I find that the worse my eyes get, the, the better my modeling you know, looks. Um, I forget the my distance <laughs> glass. <laughs> I gotta get. Anyhow, these are very small on here. We're actually going through an iPhone on this, and the type is about that big. Anyhow, Jack, what do you have next as far as what you use? I think an essential tool. One of the other essential tools, and I, I, you can tell how old this is. This is a Northwest Chopper. Um, there's a couple different models out there. This one's as old as the hills. I've had to fix it and put stuff in it to make it work, but this is an essential tool. If you're trying to reproduce multiple, multiple cuts and pieces you want exactly the same length, this chopper is it's indispensable. I mean, I, I've used it for everything. Um, I, I, Drop I, the box. I've, you, Use it so long. I joined it. Just Daryl, got it right there, buddy. I know you're looking. We're working on it. That's a model by Daryl Huffman that is going to be eventually released as a Bar Mills kit. But don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, it's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> so this is a tool that I think that's essential. Uh, it's worth. Uh, I think it's like 35, 38 bucks. It's worth the money. You're gonna find it pays for itself at the first or second uh, model that you make. Um, and that uses a straight edge blade on it just yep. to, to get square cuts. It's especially just, useful more for what? Interior bracing, things like that? Oh, Throw you can those. do this for anything. Um, if you have, uh, if you were building a trestle and you've got to cut 60 pieces all the same length, you set the stop up and you chop them all. And they're all the same length. It's, it's really nice. It's a great tool for repetitious cuts. Um, Frank Bernard says, way to go, Daryl Huffman, just so you know, okay? <laughs> uh, what else do you have uh, that you want to go through? Um, I got a lot of things. You do? Yeah. This is an awl. Nice little point. Great for starting holes. I use it for poking holes in my roofs to put round pipes and things like that so in. So you either have an awl or nothing at all? Oh, uh, nothing. This is not a nothing at all. This <laughs> is all awl. Um, you can even clean out your, your the glue nozzles with it and all kinds of things so an all is a great thing to have it works really really well now john sherwood just mentioned that when he uses his chopper he doesn't get good clean cuts the, how often do you change that blade and the other thing is if it's a really thick piece it's not it's going to waver a little bit so it, when i get into the thicker stuff um we'll go to uh, a razor saw and uh, I use like a zona saw. Yeah, zona saws. By the way, you can get shop around if you near or if you live near a rockler. They rockler uh, woodworking sells zona saws. If you look yeah. in the back, this is a nice little thin blade. Um, they make actually a little miter box that this goes on. If you really want accurate cuts, you want forty five cuts. You want thirty degree cuts. They make them, and you can really make some nice cuts with the saw in the bigger bigger uh, pieces of wood. Oh, I, have to, I have to say also, John, with the, with the question about the clean cuts on your on your um, Northwest Short Line chopper, you happen to be an O-scaler, so you're dealing with even thicker right. stock. I would... I, I, I kind of draw a line with the short line as far yeah. as using anything, say, over a quarter of an inch, I think, is pushing it without having the blade deflect where you will get... Or am I, what do you think? 
Am I yeah, wrong? it does. It does deflect, um, and you're not going to get. It's going to kind of wander out to the right, uh, away from away from the material. The other thing I cut, believe it or not, with um, my short line is uh, all the acetate for my windows. What I'll do is I'll cut them into strip the width of the, the sash, and then I will chop them the height of the sash, and I can cut them very quickly. That's the ones that don't come pre-cut with, with the kits. But if you have something that you need to cut multiple windows, um, you can cut these very quickly, and they're all exactly the same size. Yeah, so we, we came to the conclusion, and we knew it, didn't think of it, especially with larger scales like O-Scale, that a razor blade will reflect, we'll like especially you're chopping it down like a guillotine, but yeah. there's a limit to how much that will do. Uh, the razor saw, considered. when you get into the bigger stuff, and that little miter box is kind of the way to go. You're gonna get a square cut, it's gonna keep it square. Now, there's another one out on the market, there's a power miter saw. Here's a fellow who likes Fred, Wilt likes the Zona miter box, which I have right. never used. Have you ever used yeah, that? Yeah, this, yeah, I, I've used that one. The other one is there's a little power saw out that's a little like a guillotine saw that actually can make your cuts for you. It has its electric motor. Um, they're in the $40 range. They, they work pretty well. The teeth are pretty sharp. Um, when you're probably working in O scale, it will probably be invaluable because basically it is a chop saw, um, but just in a small scale. Hmm. Um, that can, I think, um, Micromot has them. There's a bunch of people who have those. Um, and I, I have I've one of those. I've never seen one of those. I have one of those, and they work work quite well. Are they battery powered? Or no, you, you plug them in. You have to plug them in? Yep. Okay. Yeah, a nice little tool. Again, it's one of those things you got to go find and set up and do it. So uh, I'll go to the saw probably quicker at HO scale, but I'm not working in very big stuff usually. I can use the zone of a cutting brass rail and everything else, right? I, I remember when I was younger, I think I that's have, what we used. Believe it or not, I have one of these that I cut my uh, pewter castings with. I put them in a little vise and I can actually cut a pewter casting with these. The blade hat lasts pretty long, I'm surprised, and it, and it cuts it really well. I have a little jeweler's uh, vise and it holds it very nicely. I think somebody asked what the best brand chopper is. Um, the original chopper was made by Northwest Shortline, a fellow named Fred. I can't remember his last name offhand. I know some of you know Fred from the West Coast. Hello from New York. Hi, Glenn. Uh, and uh, they've sold the company because they've gone into retirement, and now it's being made by a secondary company who purchased the original. Hopefully it's the same quality because they really uh, kind of had, had a game changer with that when they came out. But that was back in the, dare I say, 1970s or 80s. Yeah. I mean, I... It's been a long time. The new ones are a little better, too, because the base for that is a piece of masonite. It is. And eventually you wear a hole in it where, the, where it actually chops. Yep. The new ones all have the self-healing pads, which are a little better. Oh, okay. Um, they're a little nicer. The original one, and Dave Frary swears by this, and it's hard to find, is when it comes down, when the chopper comes down this way, like it's chopping this way, it, it doesn't do that. It slides forward when it cuts. So more of a shearing it's cut. It's more of a shearing cut. Ah. If you can find one of those, they're hard to find. You find one of those, that will cut the biggest scale and keep you a true cut. You well, know? your Falls. I used to live, that's, you know, that's where Valley Trains were. Hello, yep. Tom. What else you have, Jack? We're going to keep going. If you have any questions, uh, we'll try to catch catch it up here. Uh, Proxon Mini Chopper, very nice. I don't have never heard of What's the Proxon. What's name? Proxon. P-R-O-X. Sounds like a medical device. <laughs> P-R-O-X-X-O-N. But you must, you must use it in a stooped position, apparently. I, I'm not sure how that works. Uh, uh, tips for various roofing materials. You know, Jim, uh, next, uh, next uh, clinic uh, week from today, we are going to get more in that direction. Right now, <laughs> right now, what we're trying to do is basically cover the basics. Next week will be more about the actual we'll do the building. Materials. The materials. We'll do the materials. We're going to culminate all of this with a finished structure, with uh, with the, with the diorama kind of setting, uh, we predict three weeks. Over the last four weeks, and if you guys are interested, that would be great. Valley Trains, Pat Henneberry, Tom, uh, good friend of mine. I know him well. Anyhow, Jack, what do you have next, bud? Next one is files. Um, you want you want a, one that's relatively. This is why I think it's a number six, and it's a Millbasset file. You want one that's a little aggressive. Um, this is for taking down on your white metal castings and things like that. And then the other set of files you want to get is a set of needle files. Um, they come in sets, Exacto makes them and a bunch of make them, but it's get into cleaning up, cleaning up your uh, castings and getting into tight spaces. 
Um, I found a set of handles for them, which is really makes them so much easier than just now needle files. Well. Are they basically for metal or are they? Uh, no, you can use them on the wood. Uh, they'll they'll do wood. Uh, actually, plastic. If you see this one, it actually has plaster on it. I okay. use it on plaster. <laughs> It'll clean right up. Um, they're made for metal, so the wood's not going to hurt them. The plaster's not going to hurt them. Um, they do need to be cleaned out every once in a while. They and do how do you clean them? them? Just soap and water. This is what you call a file card. There you go. And if you draw it across in the angle of the of the file, it'll knock everything out between the teeth, especially if you're doing soft metal. Um, it'll knock it right out. This is another tool I'll talk about later um, that I use for something else too, but it'll also clean your, clean your files out. We just had a question, do we use tacky glue? Now, it's kind of early on, but tacky glue is a tool. I mean, just like any other glue is. I, I, never, use, I never use white glue. It gets very brittle. Uh, I've had kisses. I'm going to talk about... Uh, we can talk about... Okay, having a couple small connection problems, but we're still here. Uh, um, with glue, specifically, do, do we use tacky glue? And um, I use tacky glue. I know you do. Why don't, you, um, why don't we do... Let me go through... That. We'll go through them the, the way I, I, I look at it. Um, I use uh, Type Bond 2. One reason is it's waterproof, um, and I like to use... But Type Bond 2 is not a tacky glue. Let's, no, let's no. Be, let's it's be a clear yellow, about that. yellow carpenter's glue. Right. It's a yellow carpenter's glue. I like to use it. Its viscosity is good. Um, it's waterproof. So once I put my... Um, That's Type On 1, the original, but yeah. Jack is referring to the second generation Type On 2. Uh, the nice thing about it is if I use ink and alcohol a lot or I use uh, washes and things like that, my, it's not going to come apart. If I use white glue, it will actually dissolve it. The good thing about white glue is if I make a mistake, I can put a little bit of water in and get it apart. The type boot, once it's done, it's done, and I like that about it. Um, the other glue, I do use tacky glue. Um, I use this one, which, are you guys seeing this? Is this all backwards? Because <laughs> it is on ours. This is called quick dry. It means it grabs a little quicker and dries a little quicker um, than the regular tacky glue. If you can find this stuff, it works really well. Okay, now we have a comment that you should uh, have two sets of files, one for metals and one for plastics it would, and wood, so you don't get metal filings. If you clean out your file, you don't have any file filings in them anyway. You can clean them out between if you really want to, but it's not a bad idea to have, because metal files need to stay sharper. Backwards glue, we will speak backwards, I think, for this to, to make it work. Uh, backwards, but we get it. Thank you, Clark. <laughs> Clark, <laughs> That's what knowing you, backwards probably works better. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I found out that I do that I've I've been doing this for a while and selling them is these are um, glue tubes, and if you can see this, there's a metal um, needle valve that, or a needle that sticks out that gives me very very little amounts of glue out. The other nice thing about it is that opening is the same size as a common pin which means if it gets clogged up, I run the common pin down it and clean it right out. I have two of them on the bench. This happens just to have the tight bond in it. It's got a little cap on it, and I can actually... Please, Jack, distancing, distancing. Oh, there you go. Yeah, well, they can't see you it. you got to be careful, you know. I don't want Clark, um, you know, coming down with something. <laughs> um, it just, it, I can do rows of shingles that don't have adhesive on it right directly from the applicator. It gives you that little amount of glue. I'm not putting it on something and then trying to get it on with a toothpick or, or, or. A but now you've opened. Now you've opened the door. When you said we can do rosier shingles with those, uh, we're not into that because either. there are other adhesives for shingles mm -hmm. that are act as glue, but they're not liquid glues like we're using here. We won't get into it, but it basically is a double-sided adhesive tape. So we'll give you a little bit of that in advance for what's going to be coming. I was going to talk about that too. I didn't bring it with me, but I'll, I was going to talk about that. Um, but that's really more construction, but we are talking about adhesives, and yeah. that really kind of falls into this. So it's only fair to, to bring that up. If you can okay. find it out there, and, and there's a couple of people that do sell it, it's called transfer tape, made by 3M. It it's is. a double-sided tape, but basically when you peel off the backing, it only leaves a sticky part. Um, it's been around for a long time. It works really well. Um, I use it a lot for a lot of um, putting on roofs. If you ever have to stick metal corrugation, so if you have the aluminum corrugation and you got to glue them on some way, if you take the, the uh, sticky tape, put it on the back and make it self-adhesive, when it comes time to put it on the building, you peel and stick it and it sticks really well and stays and it holds it. Because it's very hard to get something to stick to that aluminum to make it glue together. 
you can use um, goo. Yeah. Right? Remember, yeah. remember contact, goo? Contact you get that thing, you stick it in thing, and you run it up, and it's got this string about this long that falls right all across the piece and wrecks it all. So if you can make these pieces of corrugated metal self-stick, it just makes it so I used much to easier. use string cheese by yeah. Palio. I think it did, did kind of, I love goo. I really did. I've yet to meet, to meet a person that's actually gone through a whole tube of goo and gotten the right. entire use out of it. Yeah. Because I got, it's there and then it dries up and you end up with nothing. When I do my it's clinic, a miracle. When I do my clinic, I take this, this tube of glue, uh, goo with me to show that what it looks like. But I'll tell you something, I don't think I can get any out of it. Now, I have a fellow Hardy. We cannot answer that phone. Can we hang? I don't know if we can hang that up. Uh, we're closed, but it doesn't stop people from calling. Uh, when you say the structure behind us, Hardy, are you referring to this structure here? Is this is this what you're referring to, sir? Uh, of course, this is a prototype. If that's the one, that is a future uh, bar mills kit. This one was mastered, uh, although it's not totally uh, finished, uh, by Daryl Huffman, who's out there. So, Daryl, this is his work, okay? Hopefully that answers your question, Hardy. Yeah, he said yes. Okay, I think he said yes. Um, then we get into um, ACC. Um, it's backwards. Remember now, you're going to have to tell them. So it's so it's uh, CAA or CCA. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> there it is. That I can spell both yeah. ways. Yeah. So this is uh, Gorilla Glue. Um, the one thing I found out about ACC is that the older it gets, the more brittle it gets. And that means uh, a sharp knock and they break and fall apart. And you're going to find out that if you break a uh, glued together piece that's glued together with ACC, ACC will not glue it back together. You need to use something else. So you want to keep them as long as you can. This one has what they call a rubber emulsion in it that keeps it a little more flexible. Plus, this tube is $4.99 instead of $7.95. And it's basically the same stuff any big box store will buy it. Uh, any hobby store. Well, I was just asked if, if there's one kit of ours that we love the most, and my, my answer to this is like this. It's like wives. It's generally the newest one that you like the most. So, yeah, we like a lot of our kits, but especially the newest ones, it seems. Daryl is the Bob Ross of Craftsman yep. Kit videos. Wow, except Daryl's alive and Bob yeah, isn't. It's, <laughs> it's that is that meant to be a compliment? I, I don't know. I don't know if Daryl has <laughs> cute little trees. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The other thing is with the ACC, you're going to use a kicker, um, and the kickers work with it no problem at all. Um, when you're doing something small, you want it to, to, to dry very quickly, then this works really, really well. So it, it works with a kicker. Uh, my last glue that I use is epoxy, two-minute epoxy, and there are some times I like to do it. When I'm gluing two heavy pieces of, together and some of these resin castings, they're going to get bumped around, so I want something that's really going to hold really strong. So oh, We have a thing. <laughs> Stick up your arm here. This is Lenny. He's stuck up. Come here. Come here. Come here. You guys all know Lenny. Come here. It's okay. I'm here. This is Lenny. He finally showed up. He's our cameraman, but he was replaced by a clamp, just to give you an idea. And he sent me a note. Big fan, Lowell. Big fan, Lowell. In Salt Lake. In yeah. Salt Lake City. would love to say a, a hi. I would like a it's little high right it's now. Backwards. <laughs> it's backwards. <laughs> or yeah. here, I'll fix that. I'll rewrite it backwards. Is that better? Yeah. Whenever this is the fellow who uh, Lenny's our production manager for twenty years, and uh, as, as I always say, he's oh, he's the guy who puts all the right stuff in the wrong boxes. Anyhow, he came tonight to help us out, and he got stuck in traffic. And I see we have Clark uh, saying to my wife Nancy, "Hello, boss lady." Nancy's under the weather right now. And so he, she's in the house, but we are here. Yeah, and so and Manny, I appreciate you spotting Lenny. Uh, it looked like an assassination attempt. <laughs> yeah. It happens when you're high profile like this. Lowell Didis, my buddy. Yeah, Lowell's a good. Lowell is a good man. Money. All right, what else do you have, Jack? Let's get back right, to so this. So that here. kind of those are my basic. Um, this is like a split glues, screen with yeah. this piece of wood in the middle. You know, people yeah. think. <laughs> Where could have been? <laughs> We're the same here by the door and by the. Look yard. at this. This works. This is. Um, <laughs> We could have just did a split screen, it would have been easier. Okay, nope. what do you have? Those are the basic glues that I use. Not a split so, screen. Yeah, I know. Okay. Those are the basic glues that I use. Um, every once in a while is a different thing, but that's basically what I use. Um, the other tool I like um, that you're probably going to need somewhere along the line is a uh, pin vise. Absolutely. A pin vise and a drill index for small 
uh, drills um, for drilling small holes. I use it for a lot of things. I use it on the layout and, and building the buildings, putting lights, wires, and things like that in. It works really well. I happened to find this one a long time ago. I cannot find another one, but it's a great tool. Uh, it's not, most of them are really thin and small. This one's got this nice big knob on the back and makes it easy to work. Hello, Kansas. Um, Claude Coney says, well, like Abbott and Castello, I, this, you could start something here. Don't do that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> this is a tool that um, came out a while ago that Jimmy Simmons put out called the nailer. Um, but you can make your own. It's basically a sewing needle on a handle, and it's used for making small nail holes, if you can do it in single nail holes. If I was doing a large scale, I'd put single nail holes in. The nice thing about this one in particular is, if you can't see it, the back end has a two. There's two little pins there, so you can do two nail holes two nail holes at once. Do you prefer epoxy or CA for joining dissimilar materials? What do you think, Jack? I, I have my feeling on that. It depends It depends upon the materials. Believe it or not, the tacky glue works really well with dissimilar metals. If I'm using plastic and wood, I'll use the tacky glue. If I'm using something heavy, then I'm afraid that if it gets bumped or jostled, the weight of it is going to make it move. I'm going to use a five-minute epoxy. That's what I like. Um, if I was doing maybe... Uh, five minute epoxy is used for a lot of the uh, plaster buildings also. If you're putting together a plastic plaster building, uh, they're using five minute epoxy and they're making a, a fillet in the corner. I used to depend a lot more on epoxy when more of our detail castings were metal because they were much, much heavier. Yeah. But we're doing so much resin these days, as you all know. Uh, Alan, he loves tacky glue. I like it too. Uh, you have to have some patience. Now, there's also a hybrid thing. If you're working with a piece of wood that you want to glue to another piece of wood, and say you had this and you wanted to glue it to another one, uh, rather than hold it too much, you can use some yellow glue and then put a little CA on either end with accelerator and put it together. The CA would form a good bond, but not as permanent bond as the yellow glue in the middle would. They form. act as clamps. And so the CA actually acts as a clamp, and that's a woodworking trick that I picked up uh, doing woodworking, but it works certainly for models. This tacky glue, though, if you either get the quick dry or the fast grab, um, the time that it takes for it to set up is a lot shorter than the regular tacky glue. So it's well worth this. It does the same things as the regular tacky glue, and I, I do like the tacky glue. Um, the other thing I like, and uh, this, this is a big controversy with everybody out there, is nail holes. Um, nail holes is one more detail that you can put in. I have files and files of pictures showing actual nail holes in buildings, which people say they're not there, but I do have pictures of it. So it can be shown that they are there. Um, this is, this is uh, what kind of what the, it looks like. It's a little star wheel. And as you roll it along, it puts a series of hole, uh, punctures of little holes. Uh, there's a trick to these, and all of them, I think, everybody that makes them, um, the punches are actually square. If you push too hard, you're going to end up with a square hole. So you don't want to push too hard. And you also, we were talking before, about a very thin piece to run this up against. Let me show you there. If it gets too big, it rides on the shoulder, and you don't get an accurate reading. If, it, if it's thin enough, the actually style wheel rides against the side of, of the uh, straight edge and you can run your, your nail holes right up the wall. And don't do your nail holes before you punch your wood out of your, the, the, like, let me show you. Like here, don't punch them out like that. Put your nail holes in before you punch them out because you can put all your, your distance marks on the piece that isn't the, that you're working on and if they line up, sometimes they line up one over the other, you can do two walls at the same time. You can measure out two walls. Um, you just hold your, hold your straight edge and run up the whole thing. So do them before you punch out your pieces, your walls. Um, it's easier to hold them too. Couple of things, uh, we have over 100 viewers at the moment. Uh, if you'd like to pass this around, some friends maybe that have some time to kill. It was scheduled for an hour, but obviously we're not exactly constricted by that and as long as you're uh you're all interested in this i'm gonna run it 
run out of stuff anyway, so we can have we'll go on to other stuff. Oh, we can we can do different things. Hello from Atlanta. Hello, Dan Russo, Big Dan. Dan, I caught you last time around as well. It says my house is covered with nail holes. If I stand away from my house, <laughs> you can see them. You know, nail holes uh, by and large are more for dramatic effect. I personally don't like to see nail holes in everything. Uh, not everything is uh, derelict or decrepit. No. Uh, the, I think, but I think they make a great contrast to help the, illustrate from newer from older. That's that's yeah. the big. The trick, some of the trick is to vary the the pressure on the punts wheel. So I'm not showing every nail hole. I'm showing them here and there, so they're kind of a ghost type of thing. And it just your eye will actually fill it in, believe it or not. If if it's not all the way down to the ground, it'll fill it in because it sees it. And I just run them every two feet scale, two feet apart. Yeah, you don't want to go 16 no, inches. You look it like just, a, a body and Clyde, the car a, from Bonnie yeah, and Clyde. It's a pin cushion. <laughs> now, Jim Mooney, who's unfortunately not here, and he's very important to us. He was on the list. Where, isn't he? He's listening. Uh, he sent us a note, uh, but Jim Mooney uh, said he, he prefers just to run nail holes along the vertical edges of a, of a clapboard wall, for instance, mm -hmm. right near the corner posts, which are typically either 1 16th square or 5 64th square in Bar Mills. And this way he introduces some of that detail, but he doesn't get into it. And tell tell me, how many of you have gotten into it where you put so many nail holes in you wish you had never started? So sometimes you've got to be a little bit um, discreet about how you do these things. I'm not Barry, trying to... Nice to see you, Barry. Well, Barry Rogier and Manny Cotto is here. But Manny Cotto says, I do the nail holes before painting. Right. The paint hides most of them right. and makes the effect very subtle. I do the same thing. I do the same thing. And, yep. there's, and Jim Mooney says, wear, wear your mask. Wear our, our we mask. have them on, Jim. Can't you see them? Jim, this is social distancing with you, sir. Uh, oh, you're there. We can show you that model that we finished, Jim, that you sent up. Yeah, that's true. Frank Vargas says he uses a black wash. I and use you a, do as well. I use after, after I've painted my building, I do a black wash over it. I use ink and alcohol. I have multiple uh, intensities, as they say. Um, but you just, use an extremely thin brush. I mean, you, you, you don't I, sometimes you basically... when I go through, if I want to accent the nail holes a little bit, I will run it right straight down because the wash is so thin, it's only staying in the hole and I can control it right where I want it. But I'm, I'm trying not to make these stripes down the wall. Now, uh, we had a remark here about, um, about pan pastels. Hello, hello, Jeff Grove. We had a, uh, a Hi, remark Jeff. about pan pastels. Now, I love pan pastels. Some people, Jim Mooney is not a fan. Uh, I use them, I use them a lot, frankly, as ground scrubs to, to, to uh, work on the, uh, the area in the diorama or directly surrounding the building. When it comes to putting them on structures, Jack, uh, here's somebody who loves pan pastels. How do you work this in? Uh, I, I like pan, set, pan pastels. One of the things about pan pas pastels, excuse me, is they're not as quite aggressive as some of the other powders. That means I used to have to use a little bit more, which is great because um, I don't put it on and go, oh, too much, now what do I do? The other thing I found out with pan pastels, I can get them off. Um, they make a gummy eraser that they make for the art people, and if you rub that across, lightly across it, it will actually take it right off. So if you ever wanted to get them off or lighten it, you can. Um, and there's enough good colors in the pan pastels I think I have five or six colors that I use mostly. Um, uh, I don't use pan pastels for my rust, but I'll talk about that a little bit later, um, only because I, I do it a different way. Now, but, a fellow mentioned that he has trouble keeping, it's a little tricky, I'm not saying he has trouble, but a little tricky to make sure the nail holes remain straight, because you know, there's, the metal rule is shift. Now, I have I, never personally clamped down a ruler while you I You don't them need on. to. What you want to do is, let me so I can point this out. This is your wall. You're gonna put your two foot lines across the bottom and you're gonna put them both across the top and you're gonna span that, that, that line and that's gonna keep it square because you're measuring two feet from this wall, two feet from this wall and you're gonna have the dots. You're then gonna put your edge this way between those two dots, hold it down tight and run it once up and be done with it. Don't go back and try and do it again. Just do it once and don't pick it up ever in the middle. Just run it through all the way on and off the other side and then you can do move this over the, to the next two feet and the next two feet you work your way across. Try to hold down the uh, 
the uh, the other thing is if you keep it on this sheet it's easier to handle this sheet than a little bitty piece of wall or a little skinny piece of wall it's just much easier to handle and you can hold it make sure you use a thin as I said a thin blade with a punce wheel and that wheel will stay against the the actual star wheel will stay against the bar not the shoulder of the punce wheel you know and then then it wanders all over the place Bill Tittman's from uh, LA is uh, working his way uh, working up the Kirch to try his first bar mills kit. Well, welcome to the asylum, Bill. <laughs> what do we have here? Uh, Chris, uh, what is your preferred way of making signs look painted on? That is going to be in one of the following clinics. Of course, that has more to do with the actual construction of what we're doing. We're kind of doing the pre-construction uh, situation of, uh, of bracing, nail holes, paints, glues, everything that you really should have, uh, your ducks in line before you really get there. Um, uh, Jim is crazy and he's, uh, Jim Hooney's on the line with us and I wish you were here, but, uh, but, mm. <laughs> anyhow, Jack, what do you have next? <laughs> um, here's another tool I found, um, and I don't know if they still make it. I hope they do. This is from Woodland Scenics. They use to put on their dry transfers. Basically what it is, it's a piece of Teflon that they make a, you can see it's got a nice flat tip on one end and on the other end, it's got a nice sharp tip. If you're doing, as we just talked about, you're putting signs on your walls and you want them to mold them into like clapboards, this little end works really well to move it right into the thing. Plus it's made out of Teflon, so it doesn't catch and rip your signs. So it works really well. If you can find these, they're made by Woodland Scenics. Um, it's the tool to put on dry transfers. It's a great tool to have. That's backwards. <laughs> I, I forgot, Willie, sorry. <laughs> Willie Klontz is on. Oh, Willie? Yeah. Um, the madman from Sidey Daisy, Tennessee has joined us. The, the king is in the house. Um, the other thing I use a lot, believe it or not, is these are popsicle sticks. Um, you can see this one. I've gotten rid of my, my uh, pieces that I glue to it. So basically what I'll do is when I have a small detail part, I will actually glue it to it with tacky glue or this one on the end has a little nub in the end I'll put a little hole in it and this allows me to hold this piece while I paint it you're gonna stick it down on the bottom no one's ever gonna see the bottom so I don't care whether I paint the bottom or not um, it works really well this is flat on the bottom it's stuck down with tacky glue it just pops right off and now I just put it on my model you know, Jeff Grove just mentioned, he, Jeff is a very highly educated engineer, and he says they had that little sticky tacky thing, but that's technical jargon, so you have to understand his language. The, 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 the little sticky tacky, that's generally how we refer to it, Jeff, the little sticky tacky thing. What are we talking about? Little I'm not sure, but he says you can get them at dollar stores, but you okay. know, there's, there's a lot of things you can get at dollar stores. That's true, that's true. But this is what, what I'm doing here. I'm painting a whole bunch of barrels at once. Um, so I can hold this on, spray my base coat on, and then I can go back and put my washes on and just slop it on and then paint up my, um, um, my, my, uh, the barrel bands and things like that. The other thing is if you go out and find these paint sticks, they come in a little, it looks like a paint stick. Um, you can get them in black and you can get a very fine point and you can do, and it's actually paint. Um, you can do them with magic marker, but if you use ink and alcohol, it will dissolve the magic marker. So if you put them in paint, you can use the ink and alcohol over, and over it. So they're the paint sticks and they come in all different um, pen widths, basically. It looks like a pen. You know, Jack, when it comes to this, now these are resin, right? These are our, no, these right, are yeah. our kegs, right? Yep. And these are clusters, which are great for... Uh, was, so they're backwards, I, so but they're like they're backwards, and but you know, so don't be disturbed. Now they're now they're frontwards. Okay, yeah, that's it. Basically, I like to use flat gray primer with these things because I would like to prime pretty much everything, and then I would tend to paint these by simply giving these a wash of. Typically, I like Hunterline. Uh, we grew up all with uh, alcohol in the same, thing. but I I like the pre mixes. I think Hunterline uses. Shoe dye, I believe, or something, right? Shoe dye on call. And basically, I get the base color and then use things like the paint, uh, the what well, we'll call them paint sticks, but they're paint bands. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to be able to highlight the bands around. Yep. And you can dry brush this and bring even more to it, but you don't have to. Are there any future kits that would be a post 
office around the, you know, if you look at our uh, Facebook page, somebody took the Springfield station that we just did and turned it into a post office. You'll see it, Jim Reese, who's on tonight, did that, and you'll see it on the top of our Facebook page. Um, and it would definitely be around the 1950s, so, so that's for Bill Fres uh, Freeland, okay? What else do you have, Jim? One thing I'm talking about, uh, this, um, Art was talking about he using his base color as, a, as the gray. Um, what I use for my base color when... See this? Would you put, what's it say, would you put Hunter Line Wash over gray primer for wood color? I do. I do. You don't have to, you just use Hunter Line, but yes. Uh, Jack is digging into his bag of goodies over here. All right. Here's a water tank. Whoop, get, get it in there, Jack. Not this is close. a water tank, and this is ink and alcohol over gray primer. Um, just, just dabbed it on, and then I painted the, the bands black. So this is, and I, then I went back over it with a little light brown and a little dark brown. It's hard to see here. But this is one right over the, right over the paint. If you use an acrylic paint, you just got to let it dry. You got to let it dry. Now, can I see something off. here? Just to be clear, this is actually part of the new kit we're releasing, the, uh, the water tower at Cranberry Yard. It'll be out in about two weeks, finally. And it's just actually a resin casting. So despite the fact that you're looking at this, and I'm sure you're going, oh, that's wood. That's wood. That's, that's not, wood. I it's don't. not. This is made from a handmade wooden master that Jack actually built. But as you can see by the end, you can see the gray. That's the, uh, the resin. Okay. Cheap gray primer is the best. Uh, you know, Walmart doesn't have it anymore. Uh, I get mine from my local hardware store. Yeah, Overshawn. If, if there's one for two dollars and there's one for three dollars, I assume the cheap one is two dollars, and that's what I use. Overshawn has one that's like the two dollar one. Uh, Jim Mooney says use Kryolan primer. I would have to disagree. I think it's too thick. I tried using it once before um, just, in a it, clinic. It depends on how much you put on. I mean, if you go slight, you can do. You can use that primer. But yeah, Jim Mooney's a very highly paid, uh, re uh, almost respected person, so he has the money to buy Kryolan. <laughs> I, I buy the cheap things. Um, I'm going to talk about this one quickly. Um, if I'm going to paint something that is made out of plastic or metal that's going to be wood, I'm going to use Rust-Oleum Camouflage Sand, which is a, it's a, it's a light, sandy color, and it works really, really well. Um, I don't know, Meyer, is it M-E-I-J-E-R? -E I I, we don't have that in, in the uh, Northeast. Okay. Has primer, I guess, John. Is that what you're saying for dollar thirty nine? Jim Mooney is a genius. Thank you very much. Thanks for who's that's a that? fan of no. That would not be Jim saying that. That oh. would be someone else. You sure? Yeah, Alan he, he Ashworth. He has those fake names. He does. He comes up with the strange ones. Alan Ashworth uh, agrees with this. Uh, he's replying to Mary. Well, thank you. Um, you want to be Mary? Or should I be Mary? I'm always Mary. <laughs> uh, use those cam. Oh yeah, Frank All the time. Bernard. Absolutely. They, they have a light green that's a really nice green. It's a great accent for windows and doors. We're talking about Frank Bernard mentions that we should use camouflage colors, not to skip by what he said. Right. So that's what we're referring to. Here. Yeah. They're, they're dead flat. There's no shine to them. Um, they are a little thick, so you got to go a little lighter on them when you make them, when you put them on. Um, they have three or four really good colors. The earth color is, is I use for a lot of things, um, for... Um, sidewalks and things like that to, to, to color in the cracks. There's another way to do that, and we'll talk about when we get into paints. Um, Clark but, Koenig says, Jim who? I, I, I have no clue. Yeah, well, he, never mind. Uh, Dr. Sherwood and watch Shade Hunter line. I, use, I keep three of them. I keep the black, I keep a gray, and I keep a, a, a brown. I think, for me, that's enough. Okay. I use three. Light, light gray, the dark gray, and then I used the... Uh, um, sandwood or no? Driftwood. Oh, driftwood. Driftwood. Yeah. There Those three right there. The driftwood I, gives I me enough. Yeah, you have the brown. That driftwood. gives me. Right. The driftwood is a brown. Actually, when you look at it, it, is a brown. But the light gray gives you that silver gray undercoating if you're going to put under paint for uh, wood that's been exposed to the weather. Uh, I'll use it for all my um, like decks and and things like that, that have been out in the weather a long time. We strongly, as, as, as an individual and a guy who works here at Bar Mills, I strongly, um, the word isn't subsidized, but I certainly underwrite in my own way uh, the products by Hunterline. They do a great job. We've used them in our kits. If you got the Doberton kit when we did it, the, uh, the uh, wharf scene, 
Uh, we actually included some that we had specially bottled by Hunterline. That was that. Um, it's worth buying and it's not expensive. Chris Herb agrees. Hunterline stuff is amazing, according to what uh, he just wrote us. And the only thing I'm going to suggest is you make something for the bottom of the bottle so it doesn't tip over. It's true. They are tall. They're they tall. To be so tall. if you want to get a piece of styrofoam and cut it and put it in it, um, I've got a lot of, uh, I have a beautiful stained floor. It's, on, it's <laughs> beautifully <too>. done, <laughs> but it's only in one little spot. Uh, Frank Bernard points out that right now Hunterline may be difficult to get. Uh, you know, we're going through things like this. Uh, so that could be true. Jack, what else do you have to show us, buddy? Uh-oh. Um, uh, here's another thing that I came up with. Um, it's not I came up with this. You can see it, what they are is they're makeup brushes. But if you're doing a very large scale, um, like a bridge of things and you need to rust it, this works very well with uh, either Pan Pastels or the Bragton um, powders. Now you have to understand the difference between um, chalks and, and powders. The powders have, if you could look at it under a microscope, little beads of oil in it, and when you rub them on, it breaks them off, and that allows it to stick and stay on. Um, when you do chalks, you're gonna find out that sometimes they kind of disappear, they wear off. So the, the, the Chalks are, are great, but you have to use a lot more of them than you do have to do the weathering powders. I tell you, when it comes, this is uh, like a makeup brush, which is yeah. say it's extremely soft. Yeah. And I'll tell you, when you have people over and you have an open house, uh, which may never happen again, uh, this brush or something larger is perfect for going over your roofs of your structures. And it yeah. will, because it's so soft, it will not yeah. tend to displace parts that you've glued on and delicate things. It'll tend to split and work right around those areas. And you'll see the, bus, the, the dust flying, so having a small vacuum as you're doing this isn't a bad idea because this will definitely kick up some dust for you. Yeah. And it, without hurting anything, which is yeah. nice, yeah. Yeah, but you can do that. Um, you can use the uh, small vacuum with it too. Um, so you're brushing into the vacuum. You're not putting the vacuum directly on the, the model. It works pretty well. Now, um, Manny, when it comes to techniques like rust here again, that's going to be more involved with the building. I can do that and, quick. But, uh, so. If we can do it, do you think? Now, yeah. what time is it? Uh, we we said an hour. We don't want to we don't want to miss anything. Five minutes. Eight. We have five minutes. How much more do you have? You have no, quite I, a bit, I, right? I am just about done. Now, I have to tell you, we are we we have just uh, purchased a line of tools that. Um, cr Barry says you use Krylon workable fixative to cover pastels and powders. You, you know what? You can do that. Uh, it's it's that's probably more pertinent to freight cars where they tend to be with it, a lot of handling. It tones them down though a little bit too, so you need to put a little bit more on. And I've used chalks, uh, not pastels or powders to say, but chalks where you just have to scrape them off. And I noticed when I put fixative on, they disappear, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty amazing because they're there, but all of a sudden they're not. Uh, Jim says to use AK. Now, Jim loves AK product. Yep. Use AK interactive rusting and streaking paints. Now, I don't know much about that, but uh, here again, maybe uh, Jim, we'll are be able to get Jim up here to help Jim, us out. Jim, are that. those are those solvent um, uh, product? Is that a solvent product or the, is that the a water AK based? line? Yeah, is the AK line? I can't. I think it is because I think I have some of their stuff. Uh, John Sherwood says uh, to Barry, oh, you're having a conversation. Not heavy, Barry, or it gets something. I kind of missed that. Um, Frank says yes, and Frank knows. Yeah, that it's, that it is, it's, yeah. If Craig says it's an enamel. Yeah. And uh, let's see, Chris, very quickly, just bought the AK Interactive Asphalt. asphalt. I yeah. can't wait to use it, but Clark says it's hard to find right now. I do want to show you this. This is something that's been around for a while, and uh, we just picked up 1,000 of these. And uh, we have a couple grits, 120, and I think it's 180 or 220. And these are amazing. It's a sanding stick, but typically, I was in, this was, I was introduced by, to sanding sticks by Willie Klontz, uh, and Willie's watching tonight, and I, I don't see our stick here. I know I keep one on my desk. Oh, he gives them to everybody. He gives them to everybody. It's, a sanding stick is basically, uh, a paint stirrer paint that, stir. that you uh, spray adhesive and you put a fine grit. Jim says it's an enamel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a fine grit on and you take your parts and you sand the edges of them, which is great. Uh, they're large. 
and they're fine, but they're not easy to replace because you've got to rip them off and sand them down and apply more adhesive. These are sanding sticks in two different grits that we now carry. And these are going to be sold on the website. And we are going to provide a special... Uh, thank you, Fred. Those sanding sticks are first rate. They really are. And Jim Mooney is saying he never got one. You're right, Jim. You have it. <laughs> Um, we haven't gotten them yet either, but we have a thousand of them coming in and we're going to be... I don't have one either, Jim. That, that's, but I have two. Uh, these are $3.95, but uh, we're going to be issuing a coupon code that is not going to be on the website. Uh, we'll have to figure out how to do this for anyone here uh, that is watching these videos that next time you order a kit, if you order through this particular coupon code... Uh, you will be getting one of these special, and I love these things. They're spring-loaded. They, this moves up and down, so they keep. you can see how it opens up and releases the tension. And uh, we will include one of these with your order at no charge. Uh, this is a great modeling tool, and Jim Mooney wants blue. I, I, think, I, I think, Jim, I think for you we have a paisley, actually. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we have a 120 and I, and I think it was a 180 and we're going to give you the final one, uh, to start with. These work great and we will include one free with the coupon code that keep an eye out on the uh, Facebook page, uh, because That's we have it. to put this on our website. I think we need to do it. Give them the code when they're watching. Yeah, maybe yeah. we should. You yeah. know what? You talk to them, and I'll get Lenny to put the... Uh, I like blue, too. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I've heard about guys like you, uh, Jeff. Hey, Jeff Grove likes blue. You know, like, God knows what that means. Uh, but he's lonely. He's in Pennsylvania. Or is he in Pennsylvania? No, Maryland. Is he in Maryland? They're even worse. This is Lenny. Lenny, I want you to come uh, up. The what, coupon what? code is already there. It's called Free Sanding. Free sanding and free, free sanding. sanding. So write that down. Free sanding. Next next time you order something and you just want to put that code in that says free sanding and they'll send you one of those. But only the guys that watch the special edition of Who's That Girl or whatever get these things. So uh, you get one and use that coupon code on the website. Yeah, the first one's we free. We will eventually sell replacement fans, but right now we're just waiting for the... Uh, we're I like blue. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll give you Jeff's phone number. Uh, <laughs> you want me to use it. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we're, we're the sanding stick pushers. Don't, don't promote that. I'm going to show Jim. You can't show him on, on this side. Yes, I can. No, you can't because all these guys they are in on this. They don't know it. They don't know it. They're going to know it. Hey, Jim. Don't tell them. What? I was going to show Jim what I did. Because well, he that, sent it to me. That, well, then uh, we're not going to show you, Jim. You're, you're on the outside. Ah. You're on the outside like the general public. It's, it's about another release that we don't want to talk about yet. Uh, what else do we have to go over? I don't know, but I, what are we, the sanding stick pusher? The, the first one's free. We're, we're, the next one's $17. Hey, buddy, you want a sanding stick? <laughs> <laughs> if everybody wants blue, I'll take the yellow one. Well, there you go. All right. Um, camo. <laughs> I don't have one in camo. Um, what else do we have to go over tonight? I think that's it. I mean, I, that's... A, the basic tools. There are some real things that you really want. You know oh. what? Take take your toolbox and show everybody what you carry around. Now Jack does a lot of his modeling uh, on and on the camper. road. He, he goes on the camper. He'll come out. He'll go camping for a week. Come back with a fully finished model. Uh, oh, yeah. That's a sometimes I have kind of different kind of camping. And basically, what he has here and he's going through is his. Uh, toolbox where where he's pull all these things this out is, for this broadcast. This is a small one, and uh, his wife puts up with this. But then again, she's into knitting, and you know those people never look up. So, <laughs> Kevin, nice seeing you, Chris. How often? Oh, by the way, next Thursday, seven o'clock. We're gonna be playing three. If it ends up being four, that's great, man. Okay, I like Syracuse, uh, but I like it better when it's sunny out. Uh, so and, that's uh, basically what I got. You can pull that jack. It looks awfully big, Jack. It's not really that big. And it's just open. Yeah, it's all the way open. Where'd you get that toolbox? Any place? Any place, yeah. It's a fishing tackle box. It's a fishing tackle box. Okay, guys. Uh, I think that's it for right now. Any last questions other than actual construction? Next week, we talk about construction. Uh, weathering walls, putting uh, the nail holes, the usual... Uh, rusting stuff. Rusting stuff. Yeah, yeah. Peter Munson. Blue can, CSX, and yellow. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, at any rate, uh, we, we will be back next week. We hope you like this. We hope you pass it around. And whether you're building a kit from ourselves or from Mr. Grove's company, 
or from uh, Doug Fiscali or maybe an older FSM kid. I spoke to George yesterday. He's doing fine, but he's lonely. Uh, he's used to having tours. Now he, now he isn't. Thank you very much. And uh, from Lenny, Jim Mooney, who unfortunately can't be here, Jack and myself. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.